Hey guys, welcome back. This is Joel, and in this series, we have been talking about Aruba's uh, Silver Peak SD1 solution. We have done quite a lot in the series already. Um, we have talked about um, orchestrator, edge connector appliances, uh, high availability designs, uh, routing, and so on. Right. In this video, we will talk about um, VRFs. Right. So. Uh, I think we all know what is VRFs, right? VRFs provide us segmentation in our network. So we'll basically go to our topology here, right? So in this topology, what we'll try to do is uh, grab my pen, one sec. Grab my pen. Yeah, so, so we've got uh, SP1 here, right? So where's my pen? All right, so uh, the idea here is we'll go to SP1 and we will, I've actually shut down SP5, right? So that all the traffic goes through SP4. Uh, it's kind of easy for us. So SP1 and SP4 is where we'll target. Uh, right now, you see this particular LAN network and this particular LAN network is where, uh, I mean, the not just this LAN, even this particular network, right? All of this is in the global routing table. The idea is we'll move them into a different VRF and we'll see if we can establish connectivity. That's the whole game plan for this video. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that. All right, so let's go to our orchestrator here. Get rid of that. Okay, so actually before getting that, right, let's make sure like a pre-check. Let's go on to our switch three here, right? And let's see from the switch three if you're able to ping this LAN, which is say this London PC, right? So let's check that. Okay, so let's grab my my terminal over here. So that's the switch three. So let's try to ping. Um, sorry, ping ten dot ninety nine dot ten dot eleven. Okay, there you go. So it's working, right? Perfect. So ideally, after moving both of these networks to a different VRF, ultimately we should still have connectivity. That's the whole test case what we want to achieve. All right. So where do we do this? So let's come to uh, one sec. All right, um, you can see some errors here, but that's fine because uh, SP5 is down, right? That's okay. Uh, that being said, we all we have to do is come down here to the search button. Let's start searching for VRF, right? So you'll actually find it here, configuration, networking, uh, routing and route segments. So you, in fact, you can search it here as well. <clears throat> so under networking, you will basically find route segmentation, which is your VRF. So I'm going to go there. Okay. So right now, what do you see? You just see one default VRF, right? And all our um, loopback interface, all the appliances, everything is inside that default VRF. Okay. So <clears throat> what we'll do now is, um, you see, uh, there's something called route, enabling route segmentation that has already been enabled. Right? Now I'm not sure if this comes by default or did I already do it in the past when I was uh, trying out certain features, uh, but that's something which you can verify if you're doing this uh, along with me, right? So the first step is ideally to go and enable uh, route, routing segmentation. It's just a knob, you just need to enable it, but make sure that you don't enable this in a live network, um, you know, that, because that will have, uh, that can have adverse effects, right? Uh, so make sure that you're doing this in a proper, either you're doing I mean, for, for learning purpose, if you're doing it, do it in a lab or if you're doing it in a production environment, right? Make sure that maybe you're doing it in doing the change window or during the maintenance time. Okay. So once you uh, do that, the next thing is we can go on to our routes, right? So let's go to routes. Okay. So here we have the routes. Ideally, all the routes should show up, right? So and all of them are actually showing up in, if you see here, drop down. Um, right now, let me see. Right, right now, uh, as you see, there is only segment all and then there's default. When you select default and all, it's actually the same. Right? There's no difference as such because there's just only one segment right now. So all the routes are just appearing over there. Perfect. Uh, so this is where, you know, um, we have to now go ahead and create a new segment, right? So going back to our previous tab, which is the VRF tab, let's go there. And let's gonna add a segment here, right? We can call it any name I want, right? I'm gonna say uh, segment, uh, you know, maybe A or something, right? Can be anything, you can give any name. So I'm gonna hit the save button. 
so that's the new segment which got created now perfect and as soon as you created that segment you see that something has started right some orchestration has started you can see over here that configuration is getting pushed onto the devices let's come back once this is done perfect so you see the orchestration is completed now we've just created vrf right but we need to obviously put the interfaces in the particular vrf that's how you would do it if you're doing it via cli as well right so yeah let's get on to it so we'll first do um, I mean, you have to do for both, right? SP1 and SP4. Let's go here to SP4. Click on deployment. Okay. So once you come here, you can see on the LAN side, you have an option here to select segment A, right? You can't change anything here because the WAN side will always remain in global routing table, but here you can change, right? So we changed it to segment A, hit the save button. Once this is done, we can do the same thing on the other um, silver pickup plants as well, which is going to be in the site number one, right? Which is London. Right, so let's go to the plants one, go to deployment. Change the segment to segment A, hit the save button. Okay, so as soon as you do the change again, there will be certain orchestration configuration, which ideally should start in the background. So let's wait for that. Perfect. So let's close this guy and hit the refresh here. Ideally, now we should see two appliances in segment A. Perfect. So that's what we intended, right? Perfect. I mean, the appliances in the default segment will still remain to be five because, you know, even uh, SP1 and SP4 still has WAN interfaces in the default segment, right? So that's why they show up there. But this is what you need to concentrate, the two appliances in the segment A. Perfect. Let's come to the routes page again. <coughs> On the routes page, now this time, let's switch this back from, <coughs> excuse me, default to segment A. Right, so you see, what do we see here? Uh, in the segment A, we are seeing just these two guys, right, which is the uh, LAN network, uh, this is the LAN network, right, on the SP1 side and this is the LAN network on the SP4 side. Perfect. Alright, so now that we have done this, do you think things should already start working? So what I'll do is I'll go on to my switch 3, right, and let's try to do the same thing, right, and see if things are working. I see the ping is no longer going and let's go on to our uh, monitoring and let's look at the active flows. All right. So on the active flows, what we do is let's just look at the sorry, active ones, active flows. And uh, here you see there is an option to change the segment from any to segment A. Let's do that. And let's hit apply. Let's see what's happening. Right, so I did not pick any flows yet. Let's see, not yet. Anyway, it's not picking up the flow for some reason. Maybe it takes a little bit of time, I guess, to reflect here, but that's okay. What we could do is uh, let's continue with our uh, understanding of this issue, right? So we have clearly moved both the networks to the same uh, VRF, which is segment A, but still we don't have connectivity, right? While you're doing that, let's look at uh, switch four, right? On switch four, you can see we have started getting an alert, which is about BGP. BGP peer session is not established and th that's expected, correct? Because why, why is this happening? Right, so initially when we had uh, BGP, right? BGP was established between what? If you look at my diagram here, there was BGP between uh, the 
100.3.101 and this guy which is the switch but this was this guy was in default uh, VRF then now we have moved this one to where we have moved it to segment A correct so we'll have to now configure actually BGP within the VRF not um, in the default so we'll have to change that otherwise this the routes will not BGP session will not be formed right so I'm gonna get rid of that and go here and let's try to fix that right so all we have to do is probably go to BGP here right so on the BGP before actually going to the BGP tab we can go to the routes tab itself and look at uh, routes for sp4 and here let's go to the pencil icon right so do we have uh, okay, one sec oh yeah my bad so it's not on the routes tab obviously it's on the bgp tab right so on the bgp tab you will basically have uh, an option yeah so you see here you have two segments now default and this thing so we have to go to the default you can see it's already showing red in color right because the bgp session is down so i'm going to disable it here hit the save button <coughs> okay so i'm going to do the same peer ip right so 1003.1 we'll have to go and do it on the segment a okay so on the segment here let's go and enable this guy autonomous number will be 65001 that's what i've used before um this one will be 192 the router id right would be okay. yeah, 192 one yeah 1.7 right yes path propagate we can enable okay and let's go and add up here over here And that guy is going to be 1000.3.1 perfect and single op local interface any peer peer asn 65001 um, we are going to have all of this static right branch admin status is up let's make sure that you have selected the right uh, so it's, it has to be um, inbound route map and outbound uh, route map over here right i'm going to use that and what else and next stop self because it's IBGP right so all of that looks fine I'm gonna hit the button add hit the save okay now we just need to wait for the BGP neighborship to come up between this particular SP4 and the uh, and the switch and uh, there we go the BGP neighborship has come up which is fine which means ideally if I go back to my switch now and see what's happening you see BGP neighborship has come up but see the pings are still not going through you can see the pings are still failing so we need to solve this right why is that happening what could be the reason right so let's go back to our routes page right on the routes page let's look at our segment a and you see the routes are still not coming through correct uh, i mean sp4 just has the routes the locally connected routes it's not getting the routes from London right. okay so how do we fix this right so all we have to do is let's go on to uh, the pencil icon on SP4 right and you will see here that automatically advertised local LAN subnet is not checked right so this this is normally checked for the default uh, VRF right you don't have to do this but obviously when you created a new VRF you need to explicitly do this right so we don't need to do the second option um, and metric for automatically added routes we can keep it default right let's also maybe enable these two settings because we have done this in the past right for the bgp to work accurately so that should take care of things i'm going to hit the save button here redistributes uh, cannot be empty uh, let's see what's it <coughs> oh yeah we need a route map here correct so here what we'll do is we'll just use the on the so yeah we'll use basically um, uh, we, we've actually used a, uh, a route map in the past right so i'm going to use that um, I, I was actually using default route map but i think after recording the last few videos what i did was i did not want to kind of mess around with my default route map so i cloned it and i'm starting to use this one right hit the save 
Okay. So, so I've done that. Let's go to SP1 on segment A. Let's go to the pencil icon, do the same thing. Enable, doesn't matter. Let's change this to this default one. Um, whereas both of these have to be checked and we are gonna hit the save button. Perfect. Now let's come back to, so we basically changed that setting so that subnet sharing will work, right? So now you can see the 10.10 .10 network is showing up, which means if I go back here, there you go, the ping is working. Perfect. I think that kind of shows clearly that the settings which we did just now works. Perfect, right? So that's exactly what I wanted to kind of cover in this video, right? Basically, let me stop this guy. Right? So basically, this was actually a quick video of sorts, right? But just to summarize what we did was, we had, um, I mean, we had SP1 and uh, SP4, right? We moved this particular network to segment uh, A, right? We also moved this uh, particular network uh, to segment A, right? So which means we moved it to a different VRF. It wasn't default VRF, but moved it to different VRF. Because of that, we also had to change the BGP configuration because initially the BGP was formed using the default VRF, so we had to change it. Once we did that, still the configuration was not working because, um, you know, the subnet sharing, you know that there is something called as a subnet sharing, which is like a centralized control plane, right? So that control plane was not enabled for a segment A, right? It was enabled only for default. So we had to explicitly go and enable this uh, what we did was we basically uh, we went to each of the uplands and made sure that uh, you know um, for that particular segment the routes the local routes and everything is getting redistributed into this subnet sharing right so we did that explicitly for the segment a once we did that then we were able to have complete connectivity working okay so that that's how simple it is to basically enable VRFs in your um, in your network, right? When you're running Silverpeak, very similar. I mean, the feature is very similar to how we did uh, you know segmentation even in Cisco Sweeptela, right? This is one of the most important feature because you might be running different different types of traffic and you would need a way to segment this. And uh, Silverpeak really solves this with like few clicks. You know, we were able to create a segment. We were able to move the interfaces to that segment. We were able to establish BGP within that segment. And finally, we were able to redistribute the routes into subnet sharing for that segment. Perfect. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and do come back for more videos. Have a good one. Bye.